Hey there, it's Mallory here with cats.com where we're all about cats. And in this video, we're talking about the facts and some fiction about black cats. Of all the coat colors that a cat can have, there's none that's captured humanity's imagination quite like black. Cats in general have been associated with the occult and witchcraft since the 13th century at least, but black cats specifically have also cemented their place in myths and legends. When you think about Halloween, the image of a black cat comes up. Frogs and toads and other animals have also been associated with witchcraft historically, but they don't quite have that place in our culture currently that the black cat does. So in this video, I wanted to step away from the kind of idea of the black cat and talk more about what black cats actually are and share some interesting facts about this coat color. Hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better appreciation of either the black cat in your home or just black cats in general. I want to note that if you feel inspired to help black cats specifically, I'll put a link to the Black Cat Holistic Rescue in the description. Uh, the founder, Tracy, was kind enough to help me out with some of the research and shared some of her personal insights, and I wanted to give her some support, so go ahead and check out their organization. There will be a link in the description and the pinned comment. So with that said, let's get on into some facts about black cats. My first fact is that you will see the black coat color in more breeds than any other color. So there are 22 different breeds that appear in black, and then of course on top of that all of the non-purebred cats. And as you probably know, the vast majority of cats out there are naturally bred. They are not purebred cats. Now there is one single breed that is exclusively black, and that is the Bombay. I'll hear people sometimes saying that they got a Bombay cat because it's a short haired black cat and they're just assuming that it's Bombay, but in most cases, a short haired black cat is simply a domestic short hair. You're going to need some confirmation from a breeder to really know that the cat is actually a Bombay. My second fact is that black cats can get rusty. So just like if you spend a lot of time out in the sun over the summer, your hair will probably get a bit lighter than it was over the winter. A black cat that spends a lot of time out in the sun can get some bleaching on their coat and it'll start fading to kind of a ruddy color. And this is referred to as rusting. You might also start to notice some tabby patterning, which brings me to my next fact, which is that most black cats are secretly tabbies. So just as black is the most common coat color, tabby is the most common coat pattern. The gene that causes a cat to have a tabby or a goody coat is dominant over the one that would cause them to have a truly solid coat. And that applies to black cats as well. So while black cats definitely look solid most of the time, uh, if you look really closely at your tabby cat, you just might notice that M on the forehead, the eyeliner lines, the rings around the tail, the stripes on the arms and legs, all signs that this cat is secretly a tabby. My next fact is that all cats are fundamentally some variation on black or orange. So what this means is that a cat can either have eumelanin or pheomelanin. Pheomelanin is a pigment that causes the cat to develop red and yellow colors, and eumelanin causes them to have black and brown colors. And while there are so many different colors that a cat can be, all of these are different variations on the two categories caused by different mutations and modifier genes um, affecting those colors. So you can think of it like there are two different paints and then you're adding different things to these paint colors, but fundamentally it is two paint colors to choose from when you're designing your cat. Now, how what determines if a cat is going to be black or not? This comes from a sex-linked gene that attaches to the X chromosome. Because these genes are sex-linked, they're going to kind of vary depending on the sex of the cat. So for example, you won't see the combination of orange and black in most male cats because they only have one X chromosome. They can't get that combination. However, it is just as likely for a black cat to be female as it is for them to be male. My next fact also relates to that pigmentation from the eumelanin. So because this 
pigment affects both the fur and the skin as well as the eyes, you'll notice that black cats tend to have gray skin. So if you were to have a reason to shave your cat's fur down to the skin, you would notice that your black cats had kind of gray skin while your uh, orange cats tended to have kind of pale, kind of pinky looking skin. And again, it comes down to the pigmentation in the body and how it affects the skin as well as the coat. My next fact is a little bit more speculative, but I thought it was interesting and wanted to share. So it was found that black cats have a mutation in another gene in the body that uh, is related to a gene in the human body that plays a critical role in allowing HIV into cells. And so researchers have been looking at how black cat immunity develops and how cats develop immunity to feline immunodeficiency virus and how this genetic mutation may shed some light on resistance to HIV. Now, my next fact kind of circles back to this idea of the black cat myth and superstitions about black cats. So there's this common idea, you may have seen it going around on Facebook or people have talked about it in your circles, that you should keep your black cats inside around Halloween to protect them from people who may want to do nefarious things with them around the holiday. Uh, now, according to my research, this seems like it is mostly a myth. Surely these things must happen somewhere and at some time, but it seems like people doing bad things to cats happens all year round, and there isn't much evidence that this spikes around Halloween, and no evidence that it spikes uh, for black cats specifically around Halloween. In fact, it might just be a bias of people assuming that these things are happening because they've been exposed to the kind of urban legend around it. Now, I talked with um, the founder of the Black Cat Holistic Rescue who has spent years of her life focusing on black cats and helping them out. And her perspective is that black cats are kind of a target all year round. And it's not just Halloween. Um, I've seen, I'm not gonna say who it is, but I've seen like big name rescues give away black cats for fleet free in August or something because it's Black Cat Appreciation Month. But I'm like, never give a black cat away for free. That's not anything that we would ever do um, at, at our rescue. And it does seem that there is some kind of black cat bias. So there is some debate around this. Some have purported that there are simply more black cats out there. So it's not really true that they spend more time in shelters. It just seems like they're filling up the shelters. However, um, further research has shown that when compared to individuals of other colors, black cats do seem to spend more time in shelters. There was also a bias test done where people were asked to look at different colors of cats, and they did find that people tended to have a little bit of a bias against the black ones, especially those who ranked higher for superstition. Every single person would be like, you have a black cat? Oh my gosh, you know, that's so, that's so scary. You know, they're, they're, they're bad luck. Just recently we rescued we, we tried to rescue three black kittens and their mom, but before we could rescue the mom, she got ran over by a car on Christmas Day. One of her kittens did as well. But the whole reason why this happened is because the owner of the mother cat, she was a Siamese cat, had black kittens and they didn't want any of them. And they said last year she had white kittens and we kept all those and gave them away. So they just stopped feeding them. And so they all had to try to find food. People have also noticed that um, the color of the black cat can kind of make it harder to empathize with them or understand what their, their emotional signals are. And so it's been speculated that the difficulty of photographing black cats can make it harder for them to adopt out. So when you're looking at those shelter listings, it can be harder to pick the black cats. Regardless of the reason for this bias, it has been shown in multiple examples that black cats tend to stay in shelters longer, leading to a higher risk of them being put down in the shelter before they're adopted. I talked with Tracy Linack of the Black Cat Holistic Rescue and she said that the best way to help is by fostering a black cat. When they do that, you know, they invite their friends over and their family over. They're going to be ambassadors for um, black cats and kittens and that's the best way to change, change people's hearts and minds. Um, and then they could actually adopt one. And, and show people how great they are as a loving companion. Like I try to tell people who want us to rescue a black cat, well, we need a foster to do that. Every single black cat needs a foster to go along with it. And without fosters, we really can't, we really can't save lives at all. 
Other than that, I look forward to seeing all of the stories about the black cats in your life in the comment section. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Black kid creeping through the forest. Hey, the bumpy toe jump aside. i